Hi everyone and welcome to Beginning Algebra live lecture number two. So I'm going to continue off um, from where I start. I'm going to continue on from where I left off last time. Um, we covered, let's see, what did we cover? We covered um, types of numbers. We covered um, arithmetic with whole numbers. And now we're going to start talking about integers. Okay. So if you don't remember, an integer is a the set of numbers from 0, 1, 2, and 3, no decimal points, along with all of the negative or the opposites of those. Okay, so um, it's represented by a blackboard bold Z. Okay, so let's just uh, get right into it. So. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about integers. So one of the operations you're going to need to know how to do on an integer is the absolute value. So the absolute value of any real number, not just integers, is the distance between a and zero. So you denote it by these two bars around the outsides of the number. So what people think of is uh, this as it just drops any negatives. Okay, if you stick a no negative number in there, you get out a positive. The reason um, that is is because remember this represents the distance, the distance of that number um, from zero. And distance is always a positive number, right? So since distance is always positive, the result out of an absolute value is always going to be positive. So, if we look, I was doing this the other day, I didn't want to scroll. Okay. So if we look at the number negative 4, negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4 because it is 4 units away from 0. Um, 4, the absolute value of 4 is also 4 because it is also 4 units away from 0. Oops, sorry. So let's look at a few different examples. So if we have negative 8, it is 8 units to the left of 0, therefore the absolute value of 8 is 8. Okay, like I said, you can think of it as if you stick a negative number in there, it just drops the, the negative off of it. Okay, the absolute value of 5, if you put a positive number in there, it doesn't really do anything to it, so it's just still 5. Now, with the next one, it says the opposite of the absolute value of negative 8. So the absolute value of negative 8 is positive, but because there's a negative on the outside, we are still going to have a negative. Okay? And then the absolute value of 0 is always going to be 0 units away from itself, so it's just 0. Sorry, I'm a little distracted today. Um, but uh, let's see. Okay, so if we want to place the correct symbols between these things, first we need to figure out what these absolute values evaluate to. So the absolute value of negative 5 is just 5. Negative 5 is 5 units away from 0. And then 5 is, you know, just 5 itself. So this is an equal symbol. All right. So the absolute value of negative 5 we said was 5, we've already done that one a few times. So 5 is greater than negative 1. Remember the symbol greater than? It doesn't really mean, you know, like the alligator that's going to eat the number, right? It means to the right of. So if we look at the number line, negative 1 is, let me make sure I'm doing it in the right place. Yeah, because you guys are m mirrored for me. So negative 1's over here, 5's all the way over here. So 5 is to the right of negative 1, okay? What is the absolute value of negative 4? Remember, it just pops off negatives, so it's going to be 4. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So 4 is greater than 3, so the absolute value of negative 4 is greater than 3. I forgot to put my little greater than symbol there. All right, 
Let's try the next one. I got a bunch of absolute value of negative fives up in here, so here's another one. The absolute value of negative five we know now is five, but we have the negative on the outside, so this is the opposite of the absolute value of negative five. So this is actually negative five. The absolute value itself evaluates to positive five, but then that negative on the front pops the negative back into it. All right, and the absolute value of negative one is just plain old one. So negative five is to the left of or less than one. So want to be less than. All right, let's see. So when you start working with integers, one of the first things you need to learn how to do is to add and subtract them. And it can be kind of hard because there's all this stuff with like negative numbers and positive numbers and like, you know, what happens with them. So there's a few different techniques that you can use and I'm gonna teach you three different techniques. Preferably, once you get comfortable with them, you move on to using the final technique that I'm going to show you. Um, these first few techniques are really just to help you kind of visualize the concept. So you're not expected to like have to draw a number line or draw these little pictures every time you want to add or subtract integers. These are just there to help you learn the concept and visualize it. Once you're good at visualizing it, it'll make the concept of just doing it using the third method that I'll show you, it'll make it a lot easier to understand why it is that way. Okay, so let's start with adding them and subtracting them with a number line. Well, actually, I'm sorry, we're just gonna do addition right now. So with a number line, you wanna start at zero and then you're going to move left and right on the number line based on the first number. So if the first number is positive, you're gonna to go to the right if the first number is negative, you're gonna to go to the left and you're gonna go however many units that number is, okay? Then the second number is gonna tell you if you're gonna to go to the left or the right again. So let's just look at this first example here. So um, I wanna point out that I've got these parentheses around these negative numbers just to be very clear that I'm doing two plus the negative number three, okay? Um, so Let's see, uh, if I wanna do two plus the negative number of three, so remember you start at zero, and then two is positive, so we're gonna go to the right two. So that's the plus two, right? That's just the two. And then negative three means go to the left three. Let me put that way for you guys. So going to the left three units will pop me right here. So I land at negative one. Let's try it with the next one. I want to do negative three plus negative one. I go to the left three. Okay, so that's my negative three. And then for the negative one, I need to go to the left one more. So that lands me at negative four. And I ran out of room here. Negative one there. So I land at negative four. Okay, let's try it again with negative three plus five. So negative three means go to the left three and then go to the right five. So we land at two. Okay, so when you're adding numbers, um, when you're adding integers, it's important to remember that the sum of a number and its opposite is always going to be zero because, like, if I did negative three plus three, go to the left three and then to the right three, when, since I started at zero, if I go to the left three and then to the right three, I've kind of just gone back to where I started. Um, and then also, remember the opposite of zero is zero. Zero is its own opposite because um, you're looking for the number that will get you back to zero. Um, so opposites are defined kind of by like same distance away from zero on the number line. If you move that many away and then come back the same amount, you'll get right back at zero. So um, zero is just the opposite of itself. So the number line, um, some people hate that number line and I get it. If you hate it, that's fine. There are other, but if you're still, um, but if you're like a visual learner and you hate the number line, there are other methods that you can use. So one of them is to use pluses and minuses, 
Okay, so you can think of five, the number five, as five positive ones being added together. Okay, and you can think of the number negative five as five negative ones being added together. And we can represent this pictorially by um, drawing little pluses and minuses and then kind of like canceling each other, canceling things out. If you see a plus and a minus together, they cancel each other out, and then whatever is left over is going to be your result. So let's look at an example of this. So if I wanted to do two, it's positive, so I'm going to be doing pluses. So two would be plus, plus. Okay, that's two pluses. And then negative three would be three minuses. One, two, three. So then I just need to cross out the ones that overlap each other. So you can see these right here, they overlap. So like those cross out and those cross out. So what's left over is going to be my result. There's one minus left over, so there's one negative. So the result is negative one. Okay can do the same thing down here. So we have negative 3 and negative 1 and we want to add them together. So negative 3 is 3 minuses and negative 1 is 1 minus. Nothing's going to cross out. I don't have any pluses and minuses crossing each other out. So um, I'm just going to add whatever is left over. There's four negative numbers or four negatives so it's going to be negative 4. All right, let's try it with this one. Negative three is the same thing as one, two, three. And then five is the same thing as one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now this time we do have things that we can cross out. So I've got three of them actually that I can cross out, that, that one and that one. So what's left over, these two pluses, is going to be my result. So two pluses is just positive two. Now neither of these methods are particularly efficient if you're just trying to do algebra. Okay? These are just methods to help you get used to the concept. So if the concept of positive and negative numbers is new to you, these are really great ways to get familiar and get comfortable with it. Okay. Now the last method I'm going to show you is the method that I recommend you try to get used to doing because it's the one that you'll use when you're trying to do this stuff in your head or um, trying to do it more quickly. Okay, And it is to, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, Okay, um, essentially there's two things you're going to do and it's going to depend on if the two numbers have the same sign or if the signs are different. Okay, so there's two paths you're going to take. If the numbers have the same sign, then you just add the number parts together. Ignore the sign for a minute, add the number parts together, and then whatever the sign was on the original ones is going to be the sign on the result. So for example, the examples I give you here are positive 4 and positive 2. You're used to doing that, 4 plus 2, okay. Well, they're both positive, I just add them together. The result's going to have to be positive because there is, um, because the two original ones were were uh, positive. But when it's negative, it works in the same way. They're both negative, so all I gotta do is ignore the negative for a minute and say four plus two is six. Okay. Well, originally, they were the original ones were negative, so the result's gonna need to be negative too. Okay. Um, when it gets to being that when it when you see a result uh, sorry <laughs> let me reword this when they have opposite signs you got to do a little bit more thinking about it uh, but not much what you first do is ignore the signs again and just subtract the two numbers do big one minus little one okay so if you have four minus and positive 4 and negative 2. Just do, don't even think about the signs for a second. Do 4 minus 2. It's 2. The way you determine the sign on the result is whatever the sign was on the biggest one. Okay, so 4 is bigger than 2, negative 2, so, or sorry, 4 is bigger than 2, so the result would need to be positive. In the example um, negative 4 plus positive 2, ignore the signs for a minute, just do 4 minus 2. It's 2. Then you have to say, well, 
negative 4 had is the bigger number. 4 is bigger. So because that one was negative, my result's going to need to be negative. You can think of it as like a pulling system. That's why we were doing the um, number line, because you can think of it kind of, it kind of works like a pulling. 4 is going to pull more than the 2, so it's going to be over in the negative section, right? Um, it also kind of helps to think about this stuff in terms of money sometimes, um, where positive numbers are money that you earn, negative numbers are money that you, you spend, um, to have that kind of um, tangible uh, thought behind it, it can help you to get used to the, the um, performing the operation. So let's just do a few of them, get used to it. Um, it takes practice. So negative 4 plus negative 6. They have the same sign. Okay, when they have the same sign, you just add the number part. So 4 plus 6 is 10. And then you got to ask yourself, well, what's the sign? Well, they're both negative, so the result is also going to have to be negative. Okay? Negative 3 plus 2. Opposite signs, so let's just ignore the sign for a minute. And just do the bigger one minus the smaller one. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, now I need to figure out what the sign on the result is going to be. Well, 3 is the bigger number, so um, because it was negative, my result is going to need to be negative. All right, 1 plus negative 6. Ignore the signs for a second. 6 minus 1. You do bigger one minus the littler one. 6 minus 1 is 5. All right, got that part. Now what is the sign going to be? You say, okay, well, 6 is bigger than 1, and it was negative, so my result must be negative. So, subtraction, with it, if you can add integers, you can subtract them, okay? So it works kind of the same way, because subtraction, um, remember, numbers are opposites if they're the same distance away from each other on the number line. They're called opposites, but the other thing they're called is additive inverses, okay? So that negative symbol, it means the opposite of, but it also means the additive inverse of. And so why the heck does that matter? Um, because we can use that to help us rewrite these negative numbers. Uh, I'm sorry, these subtraction problems. So <coughs> when we have, for example, the number negative 3, then the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Okay, so that's what this, uh, this piece down here is doing here. So if we have negative 3, it's on the left, three units to, it's 3 units to the left of 0, then the opposite of that would need to be 3 units to the right of 0, so the opposite of negative 3 is 0. It, sorry, the opposite of negative 3 is 3. So why am I talking about this? Because sometimes you'll see this a lot, negative, and then you'll see a negative, and then like in parentheses, and then the negative number. And then whenever you see that, essentially the negatives cancel each other out. So, the other reason we're talking about this is that you can rewrite a subtraction problem as the addition of an opposite. So, a minus b is the same thing as a plus negative b. Okay. And because of that, we're not learning any new skills to perform a subtraction. We're doing the same thing we were just doing when we were adding them. It works the exact same way. Okay. So, <coughs> So you don't need to worry about learning anything new. Just rewrite your subtraction problem as an addition and do the same stuff you were doing before. <coughs> Excuse me, got something in my throat. So if we want to find the difference between 5 and 6, so 5 minus 6, that is the same thing as 5 plus negative 6. Right? So then we could just use the same number line technique we were using before. And I'm going to do it on the bottom because I kind of don't really have a lot of room here. So to do 5 means to go to 5 units this way. So that's my 5. And then negative 6 means to go this way. So we land at negative 1. So negative 3 minus 1 is the same thing as negative 3 plus negative 1. So we can do the same thing we've been doing go to the left 3, and then go to the left 1, and that's going to give us negative 4. Okay. 
Now eventually you'll get used to doing these and you won't even rewrite them as an addition. You'll just say negative 20 minus 5 and you'll be able to answer it without having to rewrite it. But for now we're just going to rewrite it just to get comfortable with doing it. So, um, yeah, let's just do these um, in the way we were doing the previous ones. I don't want to do the, the little plus and minus thing. So if I want to do negative 20 minus 5, this is the same thing as negative 20 plus negative 5. Okay, so we're adding two integers. They have the same sign. So I can ignore the sign for a second, and I just add them together. So that's 25. Now the way I figure out the sign is whatever the sign on the original was. It's negative. Okay. So 2 minus 8 is the same thing as 2 plus negative 8. This time they're different signs. So we're going to have to perform a subtraction between the two numbers. Just do biggest minus smallest. Biggest minus so smallest in this case is 8 minus 2, which is 6. Now because 8 is the bigger one, it's the one that had the more pull, pulled you over to the left more than 2 pulled you to the right, then the result is going to need to be negative. So this one, we're going to have to remember that opposite of a negative number thing. Okay, So when you see minus of a um, negative number like this, remember what's the opposite of a, neg number, a negative number? It's a positive number. So this is the same thing as 5 plus 4. Well, that one's not too hard to do because there's no um, no negatives or anything in it. We can just do the same arithmetic we've done for a while, and that's just nine. Okay. So, whenever you see parentheses with a negative on it like that, deal with that thing first before you start doing anything else. Okay. Now, remember, um, addition is commutative and it is associative, which means the order in which you do the things is not really important, but subtraction was, right? Okay, it did matter the order you did things with subtraction, but if we go through and rewrite everything as an addition like we've been doing, then we can use those commutative properties and those associative properties and we can put them in any order we want, right? So first let's deal with that negative with the parentheses there, so I'm going to have negative 12 plus 2 minus 4, so the opposite of negative 3 means plus 3. Okay, So now let's rewrite this as a full-on addition problem. So it's negative 12 plus 2 plus negative 4 plus 3. Now because I did that, I can start doing things in whatever order I want to. Or you can just do it from left to right. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to do it from, let's see, let's just do it from left to right. So negative 12 plus 2. We need to add two integers that have opposite signs. So when they're opposite, you subtract the two numbers, the bigger one minus the smaller one. So you have negative 12, or, I'm sorry, you do 12 minus 2, which is 10. And then it should be negative because the 12 was the bigger number. Okay. Then let's just... scooch over here a little bit. So negative 10 plus negative 4. Negative 10 um, plus negative 4, they have the same sign, so I just add them together. So let's kind of, let's go this way. So it should be 14. If they're the same sign, you add them together. And then you give it the same sign as the result, so plus 3. All right, and then last one. Negative 14 plus 3, they have different signs, so I subtract them. 14 minus 3 is 11, but the sign should be negative because the 14 was negative. Okay, so um, can I squish this a little bit? Give myself a little more room. Technology, it's amazing. Couldn't do this on blackboards. Let's move this over here too and squish it some more. Sorry, I just like doing this. Oh no, I lost my one on my 10 there. By the way, my husband is currently recording a podcast and he talks very loud, so you may be hearing him in the background. Um, 
that's it is what it is that's what happens when everybody's working from home right okay so let's do number five 10 minus negative 2 plus 12 minus 6 so the first thing I want to do is rewrite all this stuff as addition so 10 and then minus negative 2 we when you see that it's the opposite of negative 2 which is plus 2 and then plus 12 I don't need to do anything that with it's already a plus then minus 6 so plus negative 6 okay so 10 now I can just go from left to right 10 plus 2 is 12 and then rewrite that all right 12 plus 12 is 24 oh, this one's not too bad oh now we got some negative stuff now I could have probably left this one as a minus okay because uh, 24 minus 6 is essentially what I'm going to do but let's think of it as 24 plus negative 6 subtract the two numbers 24 minus 6 is 18 Okay, and then the sign on this should be positive because 24 was the bigger number, so 18. All right, so um, we talked about this last class, but um, when you, there's two phrases you'll see that represent subtraction. Find the difference between and subtract from. Okay, so if you see find the difference between, between A and B, that means to do this one minus this one. Okay, so 5 minus negative 4. Now I see students get this particular type of problem wrong all the time. There's two reasons they get it wrong. Um, they forget which order the find the difference between comes. But the other thing that they do is they remember the order, but they get all messed up with that minus a negative thing. They think, oh, that can't be the right thing. Um, it was supposed to be the negative 4 first or something like that. No, this is right. Find the difference between is 5 minus negative 4. Or they'll just do 5 minus 4. That's the other thing they'll do. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is hurting today. Um, so if we have 5 minus negative 4. Can you hear him laughing? I don't know. I can hear him laughing. So remember, the negative, negative, right on top of each other is positive. So 5 plus 4 is 9. So different, when you see something like find the difference between, that's also representing the distance between. So the distance between 5 and negative 4, if you were to map them out on the number line, it's actually 9 units. So that's why we're getting a positive 9 here. Okay. So let's do subtract negative 6 from 12. So this one is in the opposite order. When you see find the difference between A and B, you put them in the same order that they appear in the, in the sentence. But when it's subtract B from A, you start with the one after the word from and subtract the one before the word from. So this one I, I see people get wrong a lot too. They put them either in the wrong order or they'll do 12 minus 6. They'll forget the negative because they think they're just supposed to drop it or something. But when you do 12 minus 6, or 12 minus negative 6, that's the same thing as 12 plus 6, which is 18. Okay. So, between addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, um, personally, I think addition and subtraction is harder than multiplication and division when it comes to um, integer numbers because you got to remember all of this stuff about, like, okay, well, they're the same sign. What's the sign on the result? Or there different signs? What's the sign on the result? It's a lot easier with multiplication and division, actually. So with there's a lot less rules you have to remember. When it comes to multiplication and division, you want to remember that multiplication is shorthand for repeated addition. Okay, so if you see 6 times 2, you can say, well, that's 2 positive 2s being, I'm sorry, 6 positive 2s being added together. Or you could even say 2 positive 6 is being added together. So when you see something like 4 times negative 3, that means we're going to have negative 3 added to itself 4 times. So because it's the same sign, right, the 4, uh, I'm sorry, the negative 3 is being added to itself 3 times, because they're all the same sign, they're going to have that negative sign. 
so there's a lot of different uh, notations for multiplication that you'll see. You'll see it with like a little dot, you'll see it with like parentheses, and they're like smushed up against each other, or two parentheses smushed up against each other. They all mean the same thing. At this point in your mathematical journey, you probably won't see it represented with the X anymore, the multiplication sign. It's usually going to be the dot or the parentheses, um, because at this point, you're going to start doing a lot of stuff with variables, and it doesn't make sense to represent multiplication with, a, um, with an X. Okay. So division is really just a reworking of multiplication. A divided by B is equal to X is the same thing as saying um, A is equal to B times X. Can you, he's, he's so loud. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it's been like distracting me the whole time. Um, so I don't remember what I was talking about. Ah, okay. So now let's talk about um, when you multiply by zero. So B, um, any real number it doesn't not just integers. We're talking about integers right now, but only because it's um, easier to think about it than stuff with like fractions and with decimals and all that stuff. Um, but any real number really, if you multiply it by zero, it's going to equal zero. And in fact, um, all that stuff we did with the minus and you know the adding and subtracting the numbers and figuring out the what the sign is going to be that translates to real numbers as well okay it's just easier to do it when we don't have decimals and stuff so um, any number times it's zero is equal to zero okay um, and that's remember multiplication is commutative it doesn't matter what order you do it in so b times zero is zero zero times b is zero <laughs> always works that way any number times one is equal to 1. Okay, so it doesn't matter what order you do it, a times 1 is a, and 1 times a is a. Now when it comes to division, um, any number divided by itself is equal to 1, any number divided by 1 is itself, and 0 divided by any number is 0, and any number divided by 0 is undefined, you're not allowed to do it. So we talked about those a few, a little bit last time. So the Multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers is, like I said, it's a little easier than adding and subtracting because you just perform the multiplication as if there were no um, sign at all. And then you just say, well, if they have the same sign, it's positive. If they have different signs, it's negative. Okay. Um, I like to think of it as, you know, like positives get along with each other, negatives get along with each other. They don't get along um, with each other very much. So, you know, if they have the same sign, then it's going to be a positive experience. If they have different signs, it's going to be a negative experience. Okay. So, um, negative three times negative two, same sign. It's going to need to be positive. So then we just do three times two, which is six. And because they have the same sign, the result is positive. So let's ignore the signs for a minute on this one. Four times five is 20. Okay, now they have different signs. It's going to be a negative experience, so the result is negative. Now this one, it um, is trying to throw you off a little bit because it's trying to make you think, well, okay, if I need to do negative 2 times 23 is 46, and then it's going to be negative. But notice there's that 0 there. 0 times anything is going to be 0, right? So if we do 0 times negative 2, we get 0 times 23, and then 0 times 23 is just 0, okay? So if you have a string of multiplications and one of those numbers is 0, then it's definitely going to always be 0. It doesn't matter where that 0 is, okay? It doesn't matter how many things it's multiplied by. The only time that's not true is if you throw some pluses and minuses in there somewhere, or maybe throw in a division uh, that might mess some stuff up, especially if that 0 ends up being on the bottom, okay? So let's try this one. Um, negative 1 times negative 2, same sign, positive experience, so it's going to be 2. And then 2 times 3 is just 6. Alright, negative 2 times negative 4, same sign, so it's positive, so 8. And then times negative 2, so 8 times negative 2 is 16, but this time because they have different signs, they're opposites of each other, 
going to be a negative experience, so it's negative 16. All right, um, negative 22 divided by 2. So ignore the sign for a second. 22 divided by 2 is 11. Because they have different signs, it's going to be negative. Okay, negative 12 divided by negative 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Because they have the same sign, it's going to be positive. Negative 10 divided by 50. I'm sorry, uh, negative 100 divided by 50 is going to be 100 divided by 50 is 2 because they have opposite or sorry different signs it's going to be negative remember 0 divided by anything doesn't matter what you divide it by always going to just be 0 now 12 divided by 0 can't divide by 0 so this is undefined technically not really supposed to have that equals there. You can't equal undefined. But if you write equals undefined, your teacher probably won't give you trouble about it. Unless they're pedantic, which some of them can be. We, we math teachers do like to be pedantic. Okay. So um, 5 divided by negative 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. But because these two things have different signs, it's going to be negative. Okay. So exponent notation represents repeated multiplication of the same number. Okay, so the little exponent tells you the thing on the bottom, multiply it by itself, however many times my little top number says. Okay, so if you see something like 5 to the second, that means do 5 by itself twice, so 5 times 5. So you can go the opposite direction. You can rewrite things like 5 times 5 as 5 to the second, or 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 to the third. So this one, we've got two threes, so it's 3 to the second, and then we have three fours. Three fours, so it would be times 4 to the third, and then how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 fives, so 5 to the sixth. can go the other way. If you wanted to rewrite this, you can do 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. And then to the 1 just means 1, so that's just the same thing as 1. Now you'll do a lot of that, what I just did, uh, later when um, you start looking at simplifying expressions. So right now it might seem trivial to you to rewrite um, um, a expression with exponents or rewrite an expression without exponents without it. But it's actually a really helpful skill to practice when you start doing stuff with variables. So the next thing I want to show you is how do you do this stuff in the calculator? Because most of the time you're not going to want to type all this stuff out, right? Um, or you're not going to want to try to do this thing in your head. Now, the calculator I'm going to demonstrate it with is a TI-84. It's the most commonly used calculator in algebra and on. Okay. However, if you don't have a TI-84, um, if you have, th so a TI-84 is called a graphing calculator because it can produce graphs. Um, if you have a scientific calculator, that's going to be one that has like a like a strip, like a smaller strip on the calculator. Um, it's probably still going to be able to do a lot of this stuff, or it's definitely going to be able to do what I'm about to show you. I think even like the cell phone calculators will do this. I don't know if they will do parentheses though. Maybe they will. I don't know. I haven't ever used it. So um, let's look at how this works. So you can do squared tw two different ways. Okay, you can do it with. The, there's usually a key specifically for doing squared. Or you can use a little arrow key and do a 2. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to do 2 squared, you can just do, let me clear my calculator here so you should see it over on the side down there. I can do 2 and then, can you see my, if you can see my little cursor, um, and then squared, that's 4. Or I can do 2 and then this little exponent here, 2 enter. 
Ooh, I need to turn off. This is a new version of this calculator, and it's doing pretty print, and I do not want printy print. I don't do print. Uh, I'll have to figure that out later. So your calculator might not look like that. It might look like um, two carat two, okay? Um, it's called pretty print because it prettifies it, but um, if it looks like that, two carat two, that's fine. So yeah, see here's an example of what yours might look like. Um, that's what most of the calculators are going to look like. They up, um, I had to upgrade. I got a new computer, which forced me to update the software for this um, TI Smart View thing, which means that now I have to figure out how to fix it because <laughs> I like it the other way. Okay. So let's um, look at some examples. So if I wanted to do 15 squared, I, all I have to do is 15, and then remember squared is a button, so I can just hit the little two there, enter. So it's 225. If I wanna do six to the third, six. Now there's not a little button on mine for the third. Some scientific calculators actually do have a thing for the third. Now your, if you have a scientific calculator, it might look something like this. It might look like x to the y. You might see it's something like that. Um, that's going to do the same kind of thing. So 6 to the third, I need to do a caret and then 3. Enter. 216. Oh, I'm using my calculator. Keeps getting rid of my, my pen. All right. And then 5 to the fifth is three one two five then one twenty one to the third Ooh, this big number is one seven seven one five six one two to the twentieth two carat twenty it's another big one one zero four eight five seven six and then one to the one thousand let's see what that one does some of you might know it's just one because remember one times anything is just one um is just itself right and anything times one so anything times one is itself, right? So if you just multiply one a whole bunch of times, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you're just always gonna get one. So just one. Okay. So when you get to negative numbers, um, it works kind of the same way. You just say, well, I need to take that number and I need to multiply it by itself, um, however many times the top number is, but you gotta like start worrying about what is the, the sign gonna be on the result. Well, remember, if two numbers have the same sign, then the result is positive, right? So if you keep doing that, that's going to be something that's even, right? Two positives, two positives, two positives. So whenever that number, that n, is, po is even, the result is going to be positive. So same thing. If the two have different signs, the result is going to be negative. So if that n ends up being odd, then it's going to be a negative result. Now, here's another thing that's really important to keep track of. Is this right here? These two things are not equivalent. If you see a negative number in parentheses with an exponent, that is not the same thing as the negative number without the parentheses with an exponent, and this throws people off all the time. So the reason is, is if you don't see the parentheses around the negative with the exponent, that negative is not being raised to the power. Only the number itself is. So something like negative a to the n is just a to the n and then the opposite of that. Okay. So um, you want to be really careful with those, um, those parentheses and negatives. So let's look at this one here. Negative 3 squared. So 3 squared is 9. This is even, so that means it should be positive. Right? Negative 3 to the third. 3 to the third is 27. Well, this is odd, so it should be negative. 
be careful with this one, that negative is not in parentheses, right? So 5 squared is 25. Now, if that was in parentheses, that would be a positive result. But that negative is not in the parentheses, so it's going to be negative. Okay? All right, negative. So 5 to the third is uh, 125. Right? Yes. 5 to the third is 125. Negative is not in parentheses, so it's just going to be a negative. So if you don't see the negative in parentheses, it's always negative. Okay. Negative 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. That negative is not in parentheses, so it's definitely negative. <coughs> Excuse me. Negative 1 to the third. 1 to any power is always going to just be 1. But this right here is odd, so that means it's going to be negative. Now, if you end up using your calculator for this, you have to be super careful. Um, I have had many students who have come to me uh, during a test, they're freaking out. Um, like if you even had calculus students do this, they know that a negative number squared should be positive. And then they stick it in their calculator and they get a negative number and they're like, oh my God, what's going on? My calculator's broken. No, it's not broken. You just forgot to do parentheses around things because remember these this here number three remember if there's no parentheses around it that negative is not being squared only the five is being squared so if you stuck that in your calculator it would think oh they don't want me to square the negative then they want the positive answer okay so if you see something like negative 10 squared if you want to if you want to square a negative 10 the whole thing you need to put it in parentheses. If you don't want to square the negative, you don't put it in parentheses. So let's, let me show you how to do that. So if I want to square negative 10, I would do parentheses negative 10 and parentheses squared. That makes sense. Negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. But if I did this, negative 10 squared, negative 100. It only squared the 10 and then it popped that negative on the front. So be really careful with that if you try sticking um, negative stuff in your calculator. This is why it's really helpful just to know the rules and not fully rely on the calculator because if you enter it into the calculator wrong, it may give you the wrong result. Okay, so now that we've learned exponents, we can start talking about radicals. So radicals, um, they represent if you have this little thingy, this little root thing, there's going to be a number on the outside, and that's known as the index. So essentially, the radical is the opposite of an exponent. So if you have the nth root, that's the opposite of the nth power. So they cancel each other out. Um, so one thing about that index is it can't be 0, it can't be 1, and it can't be a negative number but it can be two or any number over that. Um, so, uh, what is that going to be? Oh, sorry, can't be, uh, I said it can be any number. It can only be an integer. But um, <coughs> if there, oh, now I remember what I was gonna say. If you don't see a number there, the number is assumed to be two, okay? So if you, like this one, there's no, um, there's no number here, so it's assumed to be a square root. It's just a 2. So what you want to ask yourself is, well, what number squared is going to equal 100? That's how you deal with these, because remember, they're opposite each other, right? Um, the root and the exponent are opposite each other. So what number squared equals 100? Well, 10. Um, this one is a, a root of 2. So what number squared is equal to 64? 8. Why do calculator stuff on here? You can also stick this in your calculator. Okay, um, the calculator has a square root. Oopsie. So, um, square root, you have to hit the second square root and then of 64. And you probably, dang it, I don't like this calculator. You probably have to, on yours, if you don't have this pretty print thing, you have to, um, close the parenthesis. How do I make that stop? Am 
might be a mode in the calculator. Stat wizard, and I need to turn that off. It doesn't matter on this, but. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. That's what we want. Okay. So let's try it again. Square root. There we go. That's what we wanted. 64. So, um, enter that. Uh, when you do a square root, you have to close the parenthesis. Okay. Now, if you liked it better than four, that's fine. I just like it like this because it translates more easily to um, what it would look like if you had just a scientific calculator and not a calculator like mine. Okay, so cube root, that's asking, well, what number cubed is going to equal negative eight? Okay, so you may have heard that you can't put negative numbers inside square roots. It's true. You can't put them in square roots, but you can put them in cube roots. Okay, so um, the cube root of negative eight, and did I have that written somewhere in here? Eh, I guess I didn't. Um, the cube root of negative eight, so if we do uh, two to the third, we're gonna get eight, right? So two, but now we need to figure out, well, is it negative two or positive two? Well, if we do negative two times negative two, get positive four and then times negative two again we get negative eight so that works that's why you're allowed to do the cube root of a negative number a negative number you can if this number is odd there can be a negative number on the inside if that number is even there cannot be a negative number on the inside like with this one right here this one does not exist it is undefined does not exist Okay, and you can even try sticking it in the calculator if you do square root of negative nine, it's gonna be like, what you talking about? Non-real answer, it does not exist, okay? Um, because there's no two numbers that you can, um, you can't do three times three and get negative nine. You can do three, negative three times three and you get positive nine, or positive three times positive three and you get negative nine. So there's no way, to um, square a number and get negative nine. Okay. Let's try this one. So the fourth root is 16. So let me show you how to do a fourth root in the calculator. So um, if you need to do something like a fourth root, you can put it in the calculator as 16 1 fourth. Okay. So 16 to the one fourth, like that, which is two. So um, you probably won't see a lot of fourth roots and stuff in a beginning algebra class, but just wanted to show you so you can see how it, um, it works. The other way, really what you're gonna be thinking about is well, what number raised to the fourth power can equal 16? Well, it's gonna have to be two. All right, let's do this one. So let's go ahead and multiply those two numbers on the inside together. 25 times 4 is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. We can also do uh, the square root of 25 times square root of 4. It's square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2, which is also equal to 10. Um, you'll learn later when we talk more like about algebra and about square roots we'll learn about how um, those two things are equivalent so you can actually rewrite square roots um, to simplify them you can rewrite them um, by breaking them up into square roots i think we do that we might not do that in this class we might do it in if you take the next algebra class from me you might see it there what time is it okay so um that's all that i have time for because the next thing is about order of operations and it's this whole that's a whole thing um so i will do that next time so i'll be back next wednesday to finish this up um remember you can if you want to download these worksheets and work on them fill them in yourself you can get them from which way do i put it? wait you can get them from that where you see the qr code you can scan that or go to that short link it's a Google Classroom. As long as you have that link or that code, you should be able to get into it. Um, and then you can download the files. And you can also um, 
it's view this video if you want to view it again it'll be archived in there as a youtube video so yeah uh thanks sorry i was a little distracted today um yeah i'm surprised my thing behind me stayed up because my cats were right before we started they were trying to pull it down so um that uh, did not happen which was good even though if it had happened, I would have probably made it a highlight of this video. So anyways, thank you for watching. I hope uh, this helped you to learn some uh, beginning algebra. All right, have a good day.